What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. A little bit of a different video today. I'm doing a little bit of a personal challenge. Uh, I went to my parents' house to do a little bit of a design to print right from their house. So my dad uh, does a little bit of side work where he reupholsters a boat seating and other various things that are covered in vinyl on boats. And he wanted to do uh, an embossing with a custom logo. He has something in mind for the design. So I brought my laptop. I brought some filament and I brought this. This is the V0.2 uh, R1 by Fisec. This was the kit I built over at a live stream. There should be a link popping up for that right above me. It's been extremely fun and I've been using this thing for everything. But when I decided to go mobile and uh, bring something in the car, like I said, it's the lightest, it's the smallest and the 100, 120 by 120 by 120 build plays perfect for something like this stamp slash uh, embossing thing that we're going to be making. So from a laptop, I'm going to design it probably in Illustrator. Then I'm going to bring it into Tinkercad and make the 3D object out of an SVG. Uh, just because I think it's simple, it'll be easy to show him uh, how all that works. And then if we need some things rounded off uh, here and there, I'll, I'll bring it back into Fusion 360. And then we'll have, you know, chamfers and someone to be able to uh, make it a little bit better. And then uh, hopefully I'll just be able to plug this thing with an Ethernet uh, cable we'll be able to send files right to it. And I'm planning on printing an ASA carbon fiber by 3D Max. It's become my favorite filament. And we need a little bit of a heat resistant filament for this. So I think it is perfect. Let's see if I can make this happen. A few moments later. All right, so here's the design that we came up with. We have a round badge style and I made this in Illustrator. Then over here, this is the um, outlined version and then flipped over since this has to press into the vinyl. Uh, and then I exported this as an SVG and we took it to, oh, here we go. Here's the Tinkercad. So as you can see, my worry here was that everything was a little bit too sharp. And since you have to heat up the vinyl and press it in, I thought this would be a better idea. And then I brought it into here so that we can chamfer up the edges just a little bit so that they're not as sharp and that's gonna help big time. All right, and here we are in the slicer. As you can see, it is a quick 60 minute print. It should be pretty simple. Uh, and it takes up most of the bed. We made it about 95 millimeters uh, round. So let's see how this comes out. All right, so here is my makeshift setup. I decided to go with the Creality uh, filament dryer because it goes up to 65 and 70 really quickly. And that was kind of the ideal setup. Plus I can get, get it to and from my car without having the filament be exposed to anything. So that's sitting right here, feeding that ASA carbon fiber by 3D Max right into the V0. Uh, and it is choo-chooing along as you guys saw in the video. So uh, yeah, let's let it finish up and see what it does. All right, here we go. Let's check it out. Nice. All right, we're gonna go try this on some vinyl and uh, well, see how it works. All right, here is a closer look of it in some good light. And on the back, you can see I had a whole bunch of glue on that build plate, but I added these little lines. This is the horizontal line and this one means it's upward. So when you're pressing it down this way, hopefully you'll know that that is straight. So. We're gonna get a heat gun, some vinyl, and see how it looks. All right, so here is the result. And we have a perfectly embossed piece of vinyl. This could be used on larger pieces, obviously, for uh, all kinds of projects. How cool. And uh, this ASA carbon fiber is doing perfectly well holding this temperature. We've done a bunch already, just as a test. And look at that. Now that I know that this works, I can make more complicated designs and quickly reprint them. And uh, you can make handles for the back, make these bigger, smaller. It works. How cool is that? All right, so here's the perfect example of what this type of thing would be used for. So here is the old uh, portion of a seat. You can see it's discolored, it's cracked, and then it would be reupholstered just like this. And this piece, before uh, putting it in here and stitching it up, it would be uh, marked with one of these with a press uh, with a press piece, and then you would use the entire piece to make the seat. So you can emboss uh, your own uh, seating and vinyl projects. Kind of cool. 
All right, now that we're back at the studio, I figured I'll take the time to talk about the machine a little bit. This is obviously, if it's not obvious already, one of my favorite machines that I own. Uh, both actually uh, of the machines that I enjoy the most happen to be Fisec machines. We have the Trident, the Trident True over here. I use it all the time, love that machine. And then this one, obviously this one can't do everything because of its size, but also its strength is in its size and speed. And that is really why I love this thing outside of just being able to do whatever I want with it, customize it however I want and I have. But with that, I do want to go over some cons that and some issues that I've had with the particular kit. Uh, because I mean, the list goes on and on and on for the positives of this, but there were two main issues that I want to cover. So uh, when I first built this machine, it actually took me a really long time to find this issue with the first layer inconsistencies that I had. I even uh, printed spools and spools already uh, using the machine, but I just kind of dealt with the bad first layer. Um, on the machine and what was actually happening uh, I only found thanks to Brian from Ballistic Tech he sent me a link uh, from another YouTube channel uh, called Small Batch Factory thank you so much by the way and I will link that channel down below uh, he explains he has one of these kits and he explained the issue was since this uh, this printer levels at the bottom and then just goes all the way up 120 millimeters with, with which is its full Z height it eventually bottoms out on the two end stops that they have down there uh, on the linear rails. And that might be because they're either just positioned differently on in this kit over uh, against you know the official Voron docks, or maybe the linear uh, rails themselves are just a hair too short. What ends up happening is the bed kind of bumps up against these stops and then it binds because it can't just go that, you know, half a millimeter, a millimeter taller. Uh, and what happens is every single time you go to print, the level isn't consistent. And his solution was just to move the bump stops up and it creates this little gap there and lets the bed go all the way up. I was, my mind was blown. I would have never found it. I started changing all kinds of hardware, changed linear rails. I took the thing apart so many times. I just couldn't find it. So thank you very much for solving that massive headache. And as soon as I did it, first layer just con super consistent, worked every time. So I didn't like the little gap under there, so I made a little modification called the mushroom mod. But essentially, you just move the bump stops up, and I put a little cover to cover the gap there, and that completely solves the first layer issues. So that was one solution. Then uh, the other main one, this was kind of a major one for me, was uh, the printer goes so fast, uh, you start to find these little things. Like, for example, the wire that connects the tool head board to the main board is just way too stiff and what was happening uh, was it was moving so much and so fast that the connectors on both ends were eventually moving a little bit and at some point shorting out and that short uh, was happening more and more often and I kept pushing and pushing the machine because I was looking for a solution uh, and I ended up shorting uh, not only the tool head board but but also the motherboard obviously I relayed that information to Fisec this was early on now and they since then have uh, have, have all new hardware uh, for that the part of the build uh, but that was causing an issue uh, also on top of that to compound on top of that issue the uh, top hat here was a little bit too short and so those wires that are tough were also just rubbing on the top hats so the the top hats kind of pushing creating pressure on all those connectors the wires themselves aren't very soft so that was uh, a problem so two solutions I had I made uh, a remix uh, to an existing uh, modification to make an all printable uh, top hat extension and that uh, gives you plenty of space for not only the PTFE tube but, but also the wiring here so that is no longer an issue and more importantly there is a cover uh, for the back of the electronics board on the tool head and also the connector uh, where the connector goes in here on the back and you can zip tie the cables themselves which means all of the movement is now in the wire and not on the connector and since doing that modification modification, uh, printing it and installing it, I never had any more of those same issues. And I have been printing with this for six months or so. So I've definitely had this thing for a while. I've put countless hours in it. I print with it all the time. It's a fantastic desktop printer and it takes mods really, really well. As you can see here, I added a 120 millimeter blower for when and if I print PLA on this machine. It prints really, really fast and really well. I also added a Nevermore uh, fan on the side here with a cartridge style uh, filtration so that I can just swap those out uh, when I need to because I do print a lot of ASA and ABS. One of the other main modifications that I would suggest you make is 
a heating block from CHC. Uh, I actually really, really love it because the stock block is very large and it makes the first layer hard to see. Not only does this thing heat up almost instantaneously, uh, but it maintains temperature. The flow is great. You can put on all kinds of different nozzles and it's very inexpensive. So super, super easy modifications. Then I have other little things like LEDs and whatnot. And one other note is if you are going to start modifying this platform, I would highly suggest you get an expansion board, a clipper expansion board. Very easy to install, works with a motherboard very well and, and simply, uh, and it gives you the opportunity to use more plugs like for these fans and lights and whatnot because the motherboard does end up running out of connections uh, pretty quickly as you, as you keep adding things on. Otherwise, I would highly suggest this as a kit. It is a very, very fun machine. It is relatively inexpensive for this type of machine and this type of experience that you get. And it is just what an exercise this thing is, not only just to build, but also to, to get running, to tune. And it is so, so, so rewarding to print on this than to print on many of the other out of the box experiences that I would much rather uh, play with something like this if you're into that part of the hobby. If you want something right out of the box just to print so that you don't have anything to mess with, this is definitely not for you. But I do gotta give kudos to Fisec for not only putting this awesome kit together, but also giving us everything that we need in the kit so that we don't have to go out and source anything yourselves unless of course you want to. Um, oh, and that actually brings me to another quick point is this kit also comes with printed parts. I had one of the first kits come to me, so some of my printed parts were actually wrong, and I did have to print some parts myself. Myself, uh, I outlined that in uh, the live streams, obviously, as I went and found those things out. They have also since then sorted that issue out as well. So that's another thing. If you don't have a machine to print these parts, or you don't want to print all of these parts and figure out all the STLs and which ones you need to print, they do. this printer does come with everything you need. All the printed parts are in it too. They're printed in ASC they look good the quality is high they're just very it's very hard to nitpick about this machine even though I did have some issues that I talked to you about today all right guys that's all I'm going to try to keep this thing short and sweet I had a really really fun uh, actually uh, time doing that project at my parents house uh, and it was just really cool to bring this thing along along and kind of showcase it off you know it's not uh, it's not every day that uh, someone outside of 3d printing can see something like that you know from design or from concept to the design to actually printing it and then more importantly to use it all within about two hours two and a half hours total so that was a blast um, yeah all right if you guys like this type of video please go ahead and let me know down in the comments or use the, that uh, thumb button uh, that's down below there. I would love to hear your feedback because I had a blast doing it. As always, guys, there's free uh, links down below for all of this stuff. Uh, they are affiliate links. I do get a small cut if you guys use those links. They cost you nothing. They just help me guide you along to various products like this kit, as well as things like my Patreon, which helps the channel out tremendously. YouTube memberships also, obviously, obviously, but also the free Discord that's in there. It is a chat, a, a whole forum, a whole community uh, in there of like-minded people sharing their 3D prints, 3D printer builds, all kinds of fun stuff. You can go in there and troubleshoot your machine and get help, whatever it might be. All right, lots of fun stuff happening. And as always, I'll see you down in the comments. Later.